All right, guys. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to use Svelte actions. So Svelte actions are basically just functions that you can run on components and you can have various things on them. So the first thing we're going to do is just open up the terminal and then run npm in it Svelte. And then we're just going to press enter and then skeleton project. And we're going to choose TypeScript syntax with no additional options. So now let's just install all the dependencies by running npm install. All right. Once we're done installing all the dependencies, we can run npm run dev. So right here, once it's done running, we could just close the terminal and then in the source folder and in the routes folder, we're going to create a new file called plus layout .svel. So then the first thing we're going to do is create a section with the class of app and it's going to contain a slot, which is basically where the content is going to go for the application. So then below the actual application or actually the content, we're going to have some links to the different pages of the website. So then we're going to have a style tag with styling the different apps and also the, the links. So then once it's done, we can save this file and on the plus page .svel file, let's remove all the default markup. And all we're going to do is just include an H1 tag with the tag of home. So then the first thing we're going to do is in the routes folder, create a new folder called basic. So in this one, we're going to have a plus page .svel file and in here, all right, so in this file, what we're going to do is just show a simple example of how a Svelte kit action can be used to change the content of different elements. So this works across all of the elements in, in Svelte and in HTML, and you can tag on these actions however you would like. So then the first thing we're going to do is create a script tag with a language property set to TS, import the action type from Svelte kit, from Svelte slash actions, and create a green action so that all we're going to do is just change the style or the color of the text color of the element to green, no matter what the element is, we're going to change the color. So then we're going to change the text. We're going to create a text action that changes the text to whatever we input it. So you see that we can pass parameters inside of our action and then we can actually use them inside of our action. So then the next thing we're going to do is just create an H1 tag using the green action and then another P tag using the green and the text action. So take a look and notice that this P has no content inside. But if we go over to localhost right here in the terminal, like so, you see that we're taken to home. And if we go to basic, you see that it has some text, even though it didn't have some text before. But if you go to inspect element, or if you go to the page source, so if you go to sources, if you go to page source, you can see if I expand this really quick, but the P tag is not included right here. So you can see really quickly. That if you reach refresh the page here when it loads it doesn't have the green or the text doesn't isn't even rendered so you can see that actions only run on the client side and they don't run on the server side so that's actually a really good feature of actions so now we could go back and then close the terminal and then close this file right here and then inside the routes folder let's create a new folder called cursor events and then here let's create another file called plus page that so in this example, what we're going to do is just create a simple cursor event. So the element that we tag on the action is going to follow the cursor of the user. So the first thing we're going to do is create a script tag with the language property set to TS. And then we're going to import the type action. And also we're going to import spring from Svelte slash motion. So then we're going to create an action called follow cursor. And this is going to be used to actually follow the cursor. And then we're going to have an event listener for on the window. So whenever the mouse moves, we could actually edit the app edit the position of the element. So now what we're going to do is just create an H1 with the cursor events. So we know that this page is actually cursor events. And then we're going to create a div using the use follow cursor. And what we're going to do is just quickly style this div so that it has a width and a height and also border radius of 100 pixels. And it also has some background color. So then let's save this right here and let's go over to the to the actual page right here and let's go to cursor events. And you can see it follows the cursor. But now what if we want this cursor to be like springy and we don't want it to just be like statically following the, the mouse, right? So now what we're going to do is create another action called follow cursor spring. And then what we're going to do is create two spring. So what we're going to do is create two spring stores. So basically whenever we change the property inside the spring, it uses an easing function to not just instantaneously change the value, but also ease into the value. So let's say we change from zero to one. It won't change from zero to one. It'll change more like zero, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 until you get to one and it'll be on a time function. So let's see how it looks like in the browser. So then what we're going to do is just add an event listener like before, but instead of changing it, what we're going to do is set 
the spring writable. Okay, so what we're going to do is just listen to the spring writable. So whenever there's a change, we actually edit the top or the left on the element top. Right. So now what we're going to do is just use we're going to style one of the divs so that it can actually be using the follow cursor spring. So then we're also going to give it a class of green so that we can actually edit it correctly. And then we're just going to set a different background width and height of this div. So then once we could save this file. And now if we go over here, you can see that it follows the mouse in a different way, like different physics. And you can see that it works. So now let's go back to here and let's close this file. And then in the routes folder, let's create a new file of a new folder called update. And in here, let's create a new file called plus page that's felt. So then what we're going to do is create a script tag with the language property set to TS. And we're also going to import the action. So you can see that whenever we want to actually use the action inside of our TypeScript script so that we can actually have to import it. So then this allows us to have an interface where we can interact with it. So then right here, we're just going to create a log action where the action takes in an element and also a string. So you can see that if we hover over, we can see that node and also we have value right here. And this value is going to be a string. And then we're going to console log. But as you can see in this action, we could have as much properties as we want inside of this value. And we'll see in later in the future how this is going to work. So then we're going to return an update. We're going to turn object with an update function that takes a new val. So this new val is just going to be the updated version of this val. So you can see that we have the initial value and also the new value right here. And we're logging both of them. So then what we're going to do is just create an input right here an input string and then we're going to have just an h1 an input that binds this value to this input and also we're going to have a div that displays lot that displays the input but also uses the input action by the way you can see that we don't really need to display the input but this is more like stylistically i'll show you in the future example how we could actually remove this input and it'll still work as usual so then for this with this um hover thing doesn't let us click so we're just going to have to go just a slash right here. And then we're going to go to update. So you can see that if we type in like so, and if we inspect element, if we go to console, you can see that the initial value is just an empty string. And you can see that we're logging it like this. But you can see that if I just comment that out and then uncomment this one where we don't display the input, but we refresh the page. You can see that it still works as usual. All we're going to do is just listen to the changes on the input that we're passing into the log. So you can see that we, we can actually listen to updates on a div or on different elements using the actions that spell provides us. So now we can close this file and then inside the routes folder, let's create a new folder called destroy. And in here, let's create a new file called plus page that's felt. So then the first thing we're going to do is just create a script tag with the language property set to TS, import the action type, and create a constant, which is just going to be an action that we're going to take in. Just We're not really going to take in the element because we can't really use it, but we're going to take in a value, right? So we're going to log this value whenever the component is destroyed, right? So then we're just going to create a, an items array right here. So in this example, we're going to have an array where we can remove and add items, and according to that, we could just display them. So if we remove an item, we're going to display we're going to destroy an element and whenever that element gets destroyed, we're just going to console log. At least that's what we expect. So then we're going to create two buttons. One of them is going to be to add an item. And you can see that we're adding an item by just concatenating the array. And we're going to also remove an item by removing it using the slice function. So then we're going to create an each block iterating over the items right here and logging on destroy whenever this item gets removed. So we can save this right here. And you can see if we open up the console and we go to destroy, let's just refresh. So the log refreshes as well. We could add item and nothing happens. But if we remove item, you can see that the value gets displayed as well on the destroy. So if we remove item two, element with value two is destroyed. So you can see that we, we can listen to when an element gets destroyed from the page using the action. So we could have some functionality there. So now let's just close this file. And in the routes folder, let's create one last folder called tooltip. 
So in this example, we're going to need a plus page loss file file. And in this example, what we're going to do. So in this example, what we're going to do is just create an action where we can append it to like a button or a specific element. And if the user hovers over it, it's going to show a tool tip with some information additionally. So what we're going to do is just create a script tag with the language property set to TS and import the action type and then create a tooltip action where we take in the content, where we take in an object with the content property, which is going to be a string. And then we're going to create an ID, which is going to be a random UUID. And then we're going to create a showing property, a showing Boolean actually, so that we can know whether the tooltip is being showed or not. So then we're going to create an event listener on the node right here. You can see on the node. So whenever we hover over it, we're just going to show we're just going to set the showing variable to be true. And then we're just going to say the tooltip wrapper. So we're going to create a wrapper for the tooltip using just plain HTML conventions and the DOM right here. We're just going to append it and we're going to give it an ID, right? And then we're going to create a tooltip container. So it's going to contain the actual content that's going to be right here. You can see, we can see that we give the tooltip inner text, the content right here. And we also give it some properties, right? So the properties don't really matter. It's just the actual concept underlying. So like, if you want to go into this code, you could, you could, all we're going to do is just create elements and just apply styles to it. It's really that simple. And right here, you can see that too. And then we're also going to create a tooltip wrapper, append the child to it. So we're going to append the tooltip container to the wrapper, and then we're going to get the node and append the wrapper to it. So we're just going to do like some layers of the DOM manipulation so that we can actually display the tooltip whenever the mouse is hovering over the node. So then we're going to create a mouse leave listener. So whenever the mouse leaves the container, we're going to set showing to false and we're going to set the tooltip wrapper. We're going to remove it from the DOM, right? So now we're just going to create a, an H1 element and then a button using the use tooltip action. So now let's save this file right here. And let's go to tooltip right here. And then we just do hover. We just hover over this and you see nothing really bad happens. It's just, you can see that it works, right? And it even works if you have multiple tooltips. You can see that if you hover over it, it works as you expect. It just works like usual. And yeah. That's really it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video served you value. Let me know in the comment section down below if there's any videos that you're looking forward to. If you're looking for any ideas, just let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know how you think about these fast paced videos and in the future, we'll see what we do. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day.